Hi, this is Peter Gould. This is episode 307, Expenses, written and directed by Mr. Thomas Schnauz. God, I love your voice. You have such a great radio voice. Uh, this is Tom. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Ray Seahorn, still playing Kim Wexler. Robin Sweet, producer. Bob Odenkirk, I play Jimmy McGill, and there he is, and it's amazing opening shot, Tom. Really love pulled it, it off. <laughs> you love it, right? This is uh, yeah. We, we, when we're breaking our episodes in the room, a lot of time we will think visually and think what's what's our opening shot. What's the you know either the start of the whole episode or the start of a of an act. And this is something we came up with uh, pretty early on that when he does the community service, that there's just this wall, and we don't know what's going on. And a shout out to uh, Catherine Wake Wakemo. Wamego. Wamego. Oh my God. Catherine Wamego, who is our extras casting, who helped find this great group of people. Everybody from uh, the young lady, uh, third from the left on, down the line, she found. And uh, then, of course, there's Bob. And then our giant person next to him, Derek, uh, who Kira Ree found, who was just fantastic. And then, of yeah. course, Mr. Frank Deal. Derek here. Blakeney. Frank Deal here, who's the... Uh, the He's supervisor. the community service super- yeah. supervisor. Yeah, he's great. Bring your card. And I think he, I think he came in from New York for us. He did. Yeah. We rode in on the plane together after the holiday. Oh, yeah. Frank is great. People. Yeah, we shot this right before Christmas, and then this one day, this this day, and the day in the restaurant. I think was shot uh, uh, the day after we came back from Christmas break, the first uh, January shooting day. Can I read it first? It's just a way of... Tom, you have such a wonderful eye for uh, composition, and I love the way you stacked these these characters together, especially that one young lady who's uh, you're just kind of seeing a little slice of her face. It just, it, it just, there's something just right about it. And I wish I could take all the credit for that, but that's, you know, our, our camera operators, Paul and Matt, just, uh, you know, they have the great eye, and they, they line these, help line these guys up and figure out, uh, you know, Composition and framing I love just make it guys. real easy for us directors. I love those guys, Paul yeah, Donahue, and Matt Creedle. And on a couple of days this shoot, uh, Paul went back to England, so we had uh, uh, Jordan. Oh right, Jordan Sloven. Jordan Sloven come in and uh, shoot a couple of days. I think he was here this day. Where are you guys? I didn't go out. We're under the forty. Uh, uh, this is this, this is, actually- is a spot that Peter found while walking around. <laughs> Aimlessly alone. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Who were you looking for, Peter? <laughs> uh, th- this is actually, uh, believe it or not, this is a beautiful spot along that. What is that name of that road? The Bosque. The Bosque, which I, I didn't know about. And then uh, Ray, oh. uh, I've been going to Albuquerque for 10 years. And, yeah, the Bosque Trail. you yes. got to go to the Bosque Trail. Yes. I told you about it? And, and uh, yeah, I believe it was uh, you and um, Patrick brought it up when I was like, what? the what? The what? And and I had a day. Oh, yeah, we were biking. I had a half a day off, and I dr- walked over there. This was right at the beginning of the season, and I walked past this. And when we were breaking Tom's episode, I thought, hey, maybe this is a spot. So yeah. I pitched it to Tom, and it worked out. I have to say, though, in reality, there's no garbage. No yeah. graffiti. There's no litter. There's no uh, graffiti anywhere. Uh, it's, it's really uh, a garden spot. Under uh, that runs under a freeway. So, do you have to promise the city that you'll like paint that out when you do that? Oh yeah. You know, computers are our future. This is, uh, as I said on the podcast, <laughs> Jonathan Banks provided that underwear for us. Wow. <laughs> yes. Impromptu. <laughs> and that's a drone shot. That is a drone. Yeah. We is like it? to. It is, yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? I was so thrilled when uh, I went to Robin and. I was like, can I get a drone for this shot, please? And, and I they... said, you can have two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Robin, you're the best. <laughs> no, we wanted to, it was, the, the sequence doesn't really work as well if you don't see the traffic above him and, and, and Jimmy down below, and that was the best. There was no way to get a crane up that high, so the drone was our only possibility, and it worked out. I love when people hang up on me. I've done that so many times in comedy bits. Uh, 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 talking and talking. Hello? 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 I love it. You just and I, There's also this moment in that little beat that we just saw where you're 
or maybe it's here, where you come up with the price that you're going to ask for. Yeah. And I, you could just see that there's this little moment where you're deciding how much to ask for. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know whether you run your tongue over your teeth or something, oh. but it's it's it gets me every single time. <laughs> uh, yes, suspended. So I'm not practicing, so I don't need... This we shot in a in a day under the under the freeway. It was a it was a very cold day. Again, a short you know, it was a December, one of the shorter days of the year for the sunlight. We just you know, Bob was amazing. We just just it's the whole team just had a bit you know, it was like a small army of organizing Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of work to get right. Yeah. We cut out a little scene here just for time. It was it was always made me laugh when you're talking to camera guy on the phone. And whenever you yell at those guys it makes me laugh. But uh, oh. we just <laughs> we just some things had to even though the, we, we ran long, we still had to cut some things out. Just a tiny bit here and there. Bob, it's, do you have to write the other halves of conversations when you have phone scenes, or are you a better actor than I am? <laughs> Yeah, I don't have to write her. <laughs> I can't I mentally think. keep it straight if I don't write what they're saying. You do have to have an abbreviation, a pause in there that feels long, a little long. I love it when you see shows where people are on the phone and they're talking so fast. I'm like, there's yes. no way there's anyone no anyone's <laughs> listening. answered you with an address in that amount of time. <laughs> It's an interesting point because, you know, it, we're always worried about boring the audience. You know, we're, we're always worried about packing information in. But sometimes the rhythm of the piece uh, can support something that's that feels a little different. This this scene is one of the ones, uh, I think, just it has a, a perfect internal rhythm. That's, that's, and I find it really funny. So pathetic. I yeah. love that Jimmy's fighting for what's right. <laughs> this isn't fair. That's not going to last. <laughs> we can make it zero. That's another line that comes back. Right? That's right. It does. He's Jimmy does uh, use a lot of uh, dialogue that other, you know, looks and dialogue that other people say and do. Gordon was talking that, about that, the 309. Gordon, well, I don't listen to him. Oh, okay. Don't listen to Gordon. That's all. They're listening to this one first. <laughs> oh, never so mind. So if Tom makes the observation now, oh, he owns people it. listen That's to the right. next one, it's Gordon I did ripping hear Gordon off Tom. Gordon, so I just <laughs> stole <it from> <laughs> <laughs> I forget what this building actually was. What is it? Uh, we... We got a lot of uh, garbage trucks from the city and let them, you know, just park them here to make it look like a parks department building. Ah, yes. Change your clothes outdoors in the cold. In January, <laughs> there's, a, there's a, we got a heater as close as we could to him, but it still it was damn oh, man. Very cold. Uh, he was very angry at you, Ray, because you got him sick. What? <laughs> it wasn't getting undressed in the cold no, with wet ones? No, he was, it was he was sick before doing this. I didn't get you I sick. Think, uh, I think it was your fault. Something that our I, entire crew was sick, and then uh, I got sick. So you're blaming the crew. Nice. I blame Helen Caldwell. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this right now and say <laughs> one thing that I learned about Bob. Is, and I learned changed. about this early on, actually, on Breaking Bad, is that you thrive on physical discomfort. Yes, I do. You like you like it if if we we, we you like being the bottom of a dumpster. Yep. yep. You like being in a sandstorm. <laughs> yep. You like being on your knees. Yep. You like being crouched in a corner. Yep. And so you know we try to please you every once yep. in a while by having you change outdoors in a cold parking lot. Well, I mean. It's weird. I mean, I absolutely do like doing all that stuff. I don't know if I like doing it. That's funny. I don't know if I want to do it as long as you have to do it. That's the problem. Okay. But I think it's really great when it, it there's almost like a, it's a play, time for vulnerability for the character in a physically challenging situation. Oh, I love this. It's so great to do this. Bob, you, you are fantastic it was just <laughs> to do a comedy scene on it you know, oh yeah, yeah you know and he gets he just to be as thrived and ray mcanally i think that's how you pronounce his name as the uh, as the store owner here he's, he was very funny mm-hmm. also i love jennifer bryan has now uh, evolved yet another look for jimmy yeah. which is uh we had some pictures that we sent her for inspiration of uh, Rob Reiner in uh, Spinal, Tap. Spinal Tap and of Spielberg uh, doing yeah. publicity photos for E.T. And she created this safari jacket. Yeah, just to add pockets and that add has the most and... crap on it <laughs> of any jacket ever. And, you know, as always, 
It looks ridiculous to me the first time I see it, and this time now I think it looks pretty good. So you might see me wearing something very much like that in the future. Yeah, when you're directing. Oh yeah, of course. Purchase. And cut. Great. That's so these. You're so funny. It's energy. Check the gate, everyone. There's no gate on a video camera. The way you move there reminds me of the Maurice Sendak book, Where the Wild yes. Things Are. You look like one of the beasts and Where the Wild Things Are. Yes. It's just great. So Bob drew his own storyboards yeah. for the scene. Which you nice. can see online, by the way. Oh, wow. Cool. At SalkermanProductions.com. Wow, oh. great. Really? Yes. Wow. I actually made storyboards. It's fun to do. My wife didn't want me to do this one. You know what? They say you got to spend money. To and finally, money. this is a great location, too. I let you, as soon as we walked in, you just see these, this long row of fluorescent lights. And I asked Marshall, our DP, could, you know, could we... As you walk in and all the there's different color temperature bulbs, or some are gr some are blue and some are green. I was like, can we leave that? Do we have to, you know, make them, you know, all match? And he was he was game for letting them go different colors. I like you. Love it. It's just slightly more sickening. I like it. <laughs> Five forty-five per commercial, but if you sign up right now for. Our Elite package? I think Jimmy's pitch is excellent. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I'm on board. 500 per commercial. Now that is Yeah, Jimmy, to, the magic is not working quite the way it, it has in the past for him in this episode. He is just, There's Julian Bonfilio behind me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The audio man. And he's rooting for you. I love that group. There's, there's so much too. fun. And, to and he with. is and rooting Josh for Fadum me, and that's kind of the interesting thing in this season they start to want me to win. I can't. Except for camera guy. <laughs> he doesn't. No. And Josh Fadum and Haley Holmes are just, uh, I could, if I do a, we do a spinoff, it's got to be right. with that group. Oh, that's <laughs> brilliant. I think we could. <laughs> it's just a separate the story that starts here, only he says yes. <laughs> you start, you redo that very scene, only that guy says yes, and then I have this business as a, and I become a film director it, with this crew. It, it could still happen. Oh yeah. You see this? This is money I've already spent on It's like um, choose your own adventure. I, I love that you have this little band of sidekicks. And and it's just it's just it's wonderful. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So let's get you in the editing room and finish this thing and I don't want to hear another word. Of course Josh is very funny. You can see Josh in uh Twin Peaks. Now in Twin Peaks, Peaks. Yeah. Oh, is he? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? Now we went for realism with uh, Ray. Really was doing the counting and you know adding everything up, and in the editing we just clipped it all out, and it just became a very. <laughs> I knew you were going to. Did you really? But you made me suffer through doing the math. You know, because you just—it's one of those things in the editing room. You just never know how much you want to keep and how much you want to, you know. Yep. In in a different different episode, you know, we might have kept all of that. That's absolutely true. One thousand five hundred eighty-six. But yes, you can hear that I'm sick in my voice. It's yes, it's exactly. there. You were you were Sorry. sick. This was the day. Yeah, Bob was like, "Don't get me sick." I know. Well, we were both sick at a certain point. Yes. Turning a profit. It's TV. How could there not be a profit? You didn't drain your bank account, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't know. Uh, oh, that's uh, Chinese food. I ordered it for us. You're working late, right? Yeah, right. Thanks. Oh, uh, wait, here. No, I got this. Hey, hi. $24. <clears throat> yeah, keep the change. A dollar. Yeah. We can make it zero. <laughs> no, it's, it makes me laugh every time Jimmy's mean to somebody. He doesn't <laughs> deserve it. Here's the great Mark Proch. Mark Proch, oh. I love so much. And what is he listening to in his car? Oh, what is the music? I don't know. And he was so... we When we auditioned the scene, he... Mark did the yell as you see it here. He went all out. It scared the hell out of me. And it's so it's so Wait, funny. Wait, he auditioned with this scene? Not rehearsed. No, we're rehearsed. Oh, rehearsed. I, mean, I was like, did you make him re audition to play the role? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we almost were going to cast another actor to play his role. Ah! 
Jesus! What the hell? I mean, what the hell? How'd you get in here? Relax. I just want to talk. Talk? <laughs> you mean, like, apologize? Because that's really the only talk I want to hear. I want to do some business. Like before, Mark Brooks and Michael Mando back together. Oh yeah! And his tiny little. This is a. This should be a set. This tiny, tiny little room, but it's not. It's an actual house that uh, <laughs> we, we jam should, ourselves we into. Jam That's the fun. crew in. The, the the locks on the door. It's so are, good. He's just added. This, uh, I think, I gave some advice about this because, of course, I grew up in uh, Manhattan pre Giuliani. <laughs> uh, and everyone had, you know, 22 locks on their doors and, and we're just missing that bar yeah. and a bar. <laughs> and, and so this was all, all, all sense memory for me. It'll be cheap. I need those capsules empty before they're sealed. So it was just a great way to bring price back onto the show that once, once Nacho got the pills, he has, he has this contact from his past who, who works at a pharmaceutical uh, company, and he's he's the guy to go to. Yeah, he's not involved with any Probably cartel, and samples diverted on so request. I wish I could say it was intentional that he was meant to come back in my episode. Why? It was just what dumb luck. <laughs> yeah, you, you you brought him into this world. He did. You you brought you, you've been our price specialist. <laughs> Every it seems like every episode I have has price in it and that that the uh, factory location. So you're responsible for the squat cobbler. <laughs> no, that was the one. That, that was, was Jenny's the one. episode. That was Jenny's. That was the one. Mark's continual choices to play this character as cocky <laughs> yes. makes me so happy. I know. Yes, he's, he he's, could have completely <laughs> played him. Like a, a simp, yeah. an idiot, but he's cock. He's a dick. He's sort of cluelessly so cocky. Great. He doesn't yeah, understand that. Dickhead. It's so great. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a very hard. Yeah, it's it's a it's a tricky thing to make to work. It's uh, it really does work fabulously well. There's Jonathan Max. I did not shoot this scene. Adam Bernstein uh, got this because oh, really? there, there was a this was built on set. Uh, after my episode ended, and uh, Adam was kind enough to pick up the scenes because you had a also had a money scene in, in episode three hundred eight. Oh, okay. So thank you, Adam. That's why this scene's just a little bit better than the rest of Tom's episode. <laughs> it does. I, I swear to God, I watched the scene. And I'm like, oh, this boy, this looks really good. Yeah, he really knows what he's doing. Better than the rest of the episode. <laughs> I gave him storyboards though. Very specific storyboards. I don't think you left anything <laughs> to the imagination. <laughs> did Jonathan know how to do this already? Or did you have to teach him? Uh, there was some, some, we had an expert on set who uh, just, just, uh, <laughs> did you really? Why are you some guidance. Wait, was there? <laughs> we had a cement spreading expert on set. Did you really? <laughs> this is all, this is all digital. We fixed it in post. Um, <laughs> no, no, he's, uh, he was a natural. He got right down there and smoothed that concrete. The lovely Carrie Condon. Yeah. This was our her. first day of shooting. And Tamara Tooney. Mm -hmm. Tamara Tooney, who's, who was fantastic. Just terrific. Her audition, she did the scene that she does later on, and that just blew us away. And, of course, you glimpsed her wordlessly in the previous episode, uh, which is something... That we we like to do and we can yeah. uh, to to introduce characters naturally and have them grow in importance yeah. if if we can and it's uh, but it's it's a producing challenge uh, because we sometimes bring in actors from other cities to uh, to, to be say there nothing. yes to say nothing. <laughs> so again, yeah, this was our first day of shooting. So I think the last day of shooting on three hundred six must have been her scene or very close to it. That would have been good producing. Yeah. <laughs> Robin's being quiet, though, so I don't know if, <laughs> if that actually happened. It's all. I plead the fifth. Rob. <laughs> this, yeah, this whole broom thing is, I, I, I used to do roofing and siding with my dad, and for some reason he loaned me out to another guy to do a patio. <laughs> oh, really? When I was in high school, and I, this is where I learned to do this brushing thing. And when we were done doing the patio... 
he was inside with the clients, and it was I was cleaning up outside, and I just went completely blank, and I walked right across the wet cement, and I was standing in it, and I remember looking up and seeing them through the door looking at me. And I was frozen there like an idiot, and he ran out, and he smoothed it all over again and brushed it, and oh, no. that was the last was time I worked joke. with him. I was joking. <laughs> uh, I love this scene. I love how... Uh, how she's 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 feisty, mm-hmm. and she's not going to put up with any of his shit. And I, that's, I think that's wonderful. It's nice seeing Mike really. He, you can tell you guys layered that in that he likes to make things. He likes to um, be useful. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's uh, it's it's touching because he's somebody who does so much destruction in his life. Mm-hmm. So, again, this is, uh, we shot this in December, and there was like a Christmas party going on at the, <laughs> oh, at the building right. right next to where Price's car is. And it was oh, just, really? Yeah, that's yeah, this, right. They, there, were, there was a parking, you know, cops guiding cars into a parking lot, and it was just a nightmare to, to shoot. This is all the Varicam, too, all this uh, oh, beautiful the nighttime night, camera. The, the beautiful yes. night footage. Powered memory. Exactly. Yeah, you look down the street there, and it's just. But so there's no special lighting here. Any of it. There is. It's it's lit, but it's lit. Uh, and I I I wasn't there, but uh, it it will be lit with the with the kind of lighting that you'd actually see there, uh, as opposed to using movie lights always. And uh, I do think we use movie lights, but they were just very far away. And yeah. they, you know, the further away you move the lights, the more the light evenly spreads out over a a, a location. It's the inverse square law. That's the inverse square law. There you go. Mm. We love bringing that up. And this shot actually did have people walking back and yeah, forth. Party goers, party. There was a party removed. going on, and uh, and our our uh, brilliant Those cars friends back that keep me posted were able to clean that up, which is amazing. Wait, to wait. Me. they took people out of yeah. this yes. in post. Yes. yes. <laughs> All in the background there, all those lights are... With all those lights shining? Yeah, there were people walking in front of them and back and forth. Oh it was God. just incredible. It was I complete. can't even believe the oh things they That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, not exactly. Empty Lydristel capsules. I'm sure Jonathan was lovely to them. How'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was very happy. He was, you know, again, this is right up against the Christmas break, so he was happy to... Be going we were, home. We were getting his scenes done, and he was going to go home to his, his family. I don't do it. So he was in a good mood. I don't know. You know, I, I, I people laugh at how uh, old TV shows and old movies look, and, and they, they laugh at the mistakes that are made. But the truth is, there didn't used to be any way to fix this stuff. Mm. And you just have to live with it. And, and we're very lucky that we can, we can uh, up to a point, make some changes. Not interested. Ah! So, so funny, these so two. So funny. What a great duo. Now, you've known Mark for a while, I've known you? him a long time, because I... Part of the comedy world, I got to know his Zim Zam Yo-Yo <laughs> from that, you know, <laughs> thing. And then we met very early on, when he first came to Hollywood. And uh, we wrote a pilot together. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, great pilot for Warner Brothers. They were interested in it. They bought it. But it didn't go anywhere. But it's a great, great... Uh, show it just wasn't uh, I don't think we neither of us is an expert at that half hour form mm. it's not you know it's Ray Seahorn hi hi yeah. hey, Ray, Ray. get some sleep Two Ray this nap. is his, uh, Calm down. a scene you think I love that loss <laughs> of time <laughs> that's so good you think what is the importance of the scene but then exactly I think, it. as you get to the end of the end of the run Right. The 310 and so did you 309. guys know? You know that you we, would be using that yes. again. Yes. Yeah, we thought so. Yeah, okay. we had the idea. I think it we was, had the idea at yeah, this point. Yeah, we, that's why we fought so hard to keep it because it's one. When you have a mm-hmm. your, you know, you're you're doing a schedule and and we somehow crammed all this into eight days and it's like you gotta what can we lose? What can make this go faster? Right. And that that scene in right there is like something that's on the table is like well how important is this? When yeah, it's not necessary write, in this plot. Yeah, but we right. the, the writers but knew is. that in the end it helps sell what happens to Kim later on that 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 little moment uh, just makes sense. And that's just that's, Kara Pifko, so great. She's so she good. Is. I love her. I love this development that she's somebody that gloats in this really gossipy way. <laughs> and Kim does not dig it. 
Well, you know that you know everyone's gossiping about Chuck in the in the legal sorry. world of Albuquerque. Again, it was. But going back to what, what Tom was saying about that little scene in the in the car, this is one of the differences between uh, a run of the mill producer and an extraordinary producer like Robin, because Robin is supporting the story, and she knows she know she understands when something something is important to the show that it's it's worth it's worth fighting for, and it's mm. it's uh, boy, it's not I'm always easy. Peter. <laughs> mm. Well. This was our last day before the Christmas break. It was. And Ray was under the weather. Well, this is all the same episode. Yes, I was sick. Very oh, sick. I'm sorry. This was the sickest day. We had some problems with air conditioners going off. and We could not get the AC to go not. off. There was a guy wandering around. Freezing out, and the AC a, was blasting in the scene. A service guy kept wandering through our set, just oh, looking at God, vents. And I was like, <laughs> please figure out how to turn this off. Poor Ray. <laughs> I got to say, I was watching for the scenes where you and I were sick and yeah. watching this. I couldn't tell. You can hear it in my voice. Yeah, I can hear it in your voice. You're right. But I know the scene you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I think it works. Sick. I think you're so overworked that it kind of works God. for yeah. the characters. I, I, yeah. But that's a challenge as an actor. You show up to the scene which you have much to do and you're not well. well like, how certain, do you overcome that? Yeah, I mean, there's certain challenges like that or like acting in the cold, where you have to act like you're not cold. Yeah. That's not really acting school. There's no nothing right. to learn. <laughs> the thing that's the most that's frustrating job. to me, well, your adrenaline will carry you through a lot of it. But the yeah. thing that's the most, but you do have a lower energy level and you can't, you know, and it's frustrating. But it bothers me that, one, I don't want to um, endanger my crew or my cast, but I also can't not show up to work. And two is it decreases my range. There are line right. choices and line readings you have in your head and you realize you've lost your lower and your upper register. Yeah, and so everything is, is flattened. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have a lot of room there to yeah. work. Wet oh, wipes. Jesus. He got really dirty that He's day. a lot of wet. <laughs> and again, David, Dave Porter's music in this so scene good. in particular. This whole scene. So, I mean, so great. It's fantastic this year. can you get with wet wipes? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to find out right in this scene. Mm-hmm. Bob oh, loves always driving fun. that car so oh, Bob insisted, much. Bob, you insisted on leaving a little dirt on your face there for the yeah. scene, which was great. This is a giant, giant sheet. We couldn't fit the uh, the wheelchair into the car. Oh, really? Not, no. All this shit doesn't fit at once, so we do the magic cut where they're shoving it in. <laughs> and then we cut around and boom. <laughs> Nice. Oh, look at this. And then that. And then that happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was all an accident. It wasn't planned. Adam's good Josh. at that stuff, he though. Really is. I'm telling you, he's good at the physical clown behavior. With this, just like the other shot where we had the snorkelers looking at the, up at them, I love that we could just hold on this group in this shot yes. and just have them go, and it's funny and tight, and it just works. Great. This shot was kind of inspired by a shot in an in X Files episode, Clyde Bruckman, where uh, Mulder leans forward into the shot as they're driving. So I showed Marshall a, a still of that and said, "Can you give me something like this?" And he gave he put the camera there and, and figured out oh, that nice. that four shot. We're taking the bus. <laughs> All time favorite improvs by Bob here. Oh. Yeah. Nice film crew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Film crew. Film crew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, who cares? Uh, just pulling rank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> why was your bus late on its route? <laughs> I had there was a film crew. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. That's fine then. Thank you. Uh, we're at a store called Music Go Round. Uh, which is right near the hotels where they they put us up. It's uh, yeah, as a, as a lesson to directors out there: don't shoot in a guitar store because all the crew and actors go off and play guitar. <laughs> it just takes that much longer to get everybody back oh, onto, really? the, onto the true. set. It's really true. 
They're the Sklar brothers. The Sklar brothers. I love them. An amazing so piece of casting. So great. And again, these are these are guys you've known a while, right, Bob? Long, long time. I don't know. Probably known those guys since uh, like 17 years or something. I don't know. Since they came to L.A. You just know everybody, well, everybody com- in the comic they're world. They're a comedy team. And uh, I continue still occasionally to do like alternative night shows, especially in New York. I'll do um, shows. And, and these guys, when they started in L.A., would play all the places I played. And so I got to know them there. You know, they have a, an act. And they're twins, obviously. And they it's a pretty amazing thing. It's a unique kind of an act because... They have personality, separate personalities, but to a great extent, they they work an idea like a like in the same direction. So it's not like a a duo where they're contradicting each other or t- they, they, it's like a it's like one brain at double speed. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's great. It was their uh, birthday, one of the days of filming this. Their birthdays when we were filming. I remember because they said one of, whichever one has the eight-year-old son said the son. Well, wait, they're twins, right? Yes, I said it was their yeah. birthday. Oh, yeah. so, is that, I guess, yeah. plural for twins. Yeah. Um, the son thought we were the worst people on the planet that we would make his dad work on his birthday. He's like, yeah. what kind of people are they? That must have been, that must have been <laughs> yeah. episode 308 because I don't remember that. We don't tell you everything. got them a cake. <laughs> but, no, there wasn't we were a cake. In this- I can tell you that much. <laughs> it's, uh, well, we got a cake for them. Pretty sure, yeah. We yeah. sent somebody around we, the corner. We, I got a cake. Always then that was cake. another. It wasn't my episode. There's a lot of cake. I know. A lot I got of cake. a cake. There's a lot of cake. In this store, I got a big cake. <laughs> There's a lot of cakes. Also, I'll also say I'm so grateful that the Sklar brothers uh, showed up because I, I, I think we had it in mind that they would these two guys be twins, and I, I kept on thinking about the Smothers brothers, and. We saw quite a few people who were very funny and good, but they just somehow, I had very funny people fix, fixated fixated on this idea. And I think it was Melissa Bernstein who brought up the Sklar brothers, and boy, am I glad she did because they, they're really funny. This scene breaks my so sweet. This Such is one moment. of my favorites. Uh, I, this scene just gets me. Mm. Uh, just this be- is he's. Because Bob has played it so great uh, through this whole I mean, episode, where just the desperation, the need for money is just you just feel it so much. The tone shifts That's... too, and Bob, you're so good in this. The shift from high comedy to very small, sincere drama is kind of amazing. Well, it Not helps really, if you go broke of. once in your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Look, look at him though. Just go broke once or twice in your life, and. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> this is very mean Joe Green. That's co, oh co- yes. commercial. Absolutely. And it just oh, it just rings for me. It's just this guy has worked so hard. He's tried so hard and nothing's working for him. For me, this episode's oh, so much of it is about a guy who usually has a groove and he's just he's no just groove. lost his groove. He's mm. lost his mojo. He's yeah. no Stella. And yep. it's just not working. And we almost didn't get this shot because it was Is so that a windy. crane? No, it was a lift. And Matt, uh, B camera operator Matt Creedle, uh, was up there. And the wind, wind was such that they were uh, about to pull him down, but he, he got the shot before uh, it got too windy. It, and actually, it was stabilized later in, in post. Oh, was it shaky? It was Just yeah, a little kind of bit. wavering. Jeez, Matt. <laughs> And Paul Donachi uh, did this great oh, camera Donna move. Chi. I'm always saying Donachi. Is it Donachi? Am I saying it right? I think it's right? Chi. I think it's Donachi. Yeah. Donachi. Paul That's what Donachi. we're going to say. Our a, our a camera operator did this great uh, move around. And this was uh, on the day I didn't know. I was like, how do we shoot this room? This, ti- this should be a set again. And we're in a tiny, tiny room. It's an actual location, which is crazy. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's a real lighting challenge. And uh, Is he on a dolly there? He's on a dolly, but he's also on a slider so that he, the right. dolly moved him past Anita right. and the right. slider got him around. Right. And then the dolly starts coming back towards Mike. Actually, I liked the whole take as it was, without, but I felt like we needed to go back and see Anita. Face again for that end, end mm. piece. 
It doesn't seem to bother her, but still. She is just so... She and, and Jonathan are so good in this scene. Uh, there's so much going on underneath these words. Mm-hmm. Fair warning, the coffee's not all that. Mm. I guess they feel if you can face this... You... And Jonathan knew her from s- somewhere, right? Didn't Jonathan know this actress? I don't know. Oh. So, I thought he said he knew her from like long ago, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's uh, maybe there's water under the bridge that we don't know about. No, I felt like he said he worked with her before, but maybe not. Well, it's possible. I didn't uh, didn't hear. That. I don't really listen to you guys when you talk to me. That's interesting. I always I thought I noticed that when you're directing. <laughs> it's possible he's been show business for 800 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You seem to know everyone who's ever told a joke. I know. I know. Right between you do me it. and John. Yeah, that's true. Certainly, anybody from comedy is somebody I've. Uh, I remember having. I had one of the first meals I ever had with you. We we had lunch at a little. Uh, little restaurant and people were just pe- comedy people who I recognized kept coming up to you like you were the Don <laughs> to kiss the ring well uh, 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 it was it, it, I really felt wow I'm I'm sitting here with Bob Kirk. <laughs> holy shit Peter I <laughs> I get to have lunch I did with every him. little I did and do every little I, I swear to God I'm just I'm in New York shooting a movie and I if I have a night free and I can get to a I'll go to an alternative comedy space and do 10 minutes and meet all the young people. You told it's me all you do, do is go to one bookstore. <laughs> I do. go. All right, go the to Strand. one bookstore. The Strand. The Strand. That's, that's our family's favorite spot. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. The Strand. It's, it's if I'm directing my daughter about where to go in New York, I always use The Strand yeah, as, that's the, where as you the spot. <laughs> but it does. And this story is, is so beautifully written, Tom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I thought for a second when I was reading it, though? And he goes out looking for that body. I thought he was going to try to fool her that they found her husband so she could bury him. <laughs> that was a small was That like, was a small worry of mine that some you, people, if you're not, not quite paying attention to what's going on and trying to get from – how did Mike get from A to B to C? Like why, A lot of people was, after this episode air was like, why did he – Call up and agree to work with Price again. So it's, it's like well, you got to wait till the next episode. It's not really. It's interesting that we we have some motivation for Mike that's not really clear for the audience, and you have to wait a whole week to figure out. I think most find. people got it. Oh no. I don't know. Well, not in this episode. It's it's hard to say what right. what about that story. Oh well, sure. Yeah. No, you're right. Mike you have to see the next. Agree one. to work with Price again. But you know, it's it's interesting because there's a lot of shows and media that have mysteries. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, mysteries who killed who or yeah. something but the the biggest mysteries are why people do the things that they do right and, let's and, watch and, the gentleness with which Bob picks no. me up in this scene <laughs> <laughs> did I yank you just watch watch because it's fun just. right arm come out of your uh, out of your arm socket I got up <laughs> easier and Tom said no do not do not help him at all and then yeah Bob yanked me off <laughs> I just yeah, I want you to do one where there was like you know you're gonna stay and work, but no, he's it's a fight between who's gonna you know who's gonna win this battle here. All right. Hey, let's get out of here. <laughs> what? And this is not outdoors. This is on stages. It's a, yeah, it's a great uh, set design here. That's a mat. You know, we put that sky in later. This is a mat. Uh, this is a this. sky that, that we that shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what women like. <laughs> That's what the whole feminist movement is about. <laughs> Fabulous. Oh. Oh. It's Alfred Hitchcock and a rented toupee. <laughs> you don't say. Come on, why would you rent a toupee? And of course, we've been in this location before, a couple of times. That's right. On Tom's episode. That's right. Did That's we start right. Well, first time was uh, Michelle's episode. That's 102. The, uh, oh, right, with the breadsticks. The breadsticks. 102 also, yes. I like it. Good, sir. Uh, oh, <clears throat> can you... Uh, but we felt we I originally this was originally written to be by the pool, which was insane because uh, it was uh, zero degrees outside. Mm-hmm. But the original intent was to bring them back to the location where they had that romantic kiss in two hundred one. Mm. But it uh, I think it works even better. Robin, Robin where they, where they had their first scam. <laughs> <laughs> the place where they had their first scam and and uh, uh, screwed Ken wins out of uh, a bottle of uh, Zafiro and Yeho. And then Bob and I suggested doing it from the bar with a vantage point of seeing everybody. 
and you said, shut up, <laughs> sit in this booth. <laughs> Just be great in the booth, Tom. It, it works. It works so it looks totally so great. great. This is really a bravura performance that you guys give here. These two characters know each other so well, and yet they have so much to say to each other. Yeah. We always like to get uh, the Kevin Costner reference in there. Good. <laughs> Every once in a while, Alan Sepinwall, the uh, TV critic, will write me ahead of a episode and say, "What's the, what's the Breaking Bad Easter eggs in this episode?" And I was like, "Geez, there is none." And I, I wrote him back like a day later. I was like, "Wait, we we referenced Kevin Costner, so that's the one." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one Breaking Bad reference. The trick with the coin you told me about. But I love how Bob, uh, you play the scene, just the anger, and mm-hmm. intensity at this this asshole. And you gave us the great latitude, Tom, to. Um we tried this scene a lot of different levels of menacing, anger, him being aware of me, not aware of me. That's that's the director not knowing what he's doing. That's not true. Let's just try every different way. <laughs> no, 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 because See, there's works in the editing room. to do it. And then you said, you know, and then just stay in character as Kim and respond to that. Try to steal you away. He will persist. And I just love that, just Ray, your performance, just listening to him and the, just the... So that little bit of fear and like uh, just oh, you're a little you. scared of Jimmy right here for the first time. I feel well, you like. know what I discovered in the moment when we were doing it over and over and over and over and over um, was uh, I assumed she'd be a little frightened. I assumed she'd feel a little like, wow, that's pretty dark. And then depending on the levels Bob did it, I reacted to that. But what came up also was there's a loneliness i think kim was kim in this scene expresses some vulnerability that i think she is loath to do to want to discuss things and instead he's somewhere else i love that it, this scene breaks my heart because they're also back where it all started yeah. it's and we always they they aren't communicating. Yeah, we always talk about the lobster scene from Annie Hall. This is not quite that, <laughs> right. but we feel, you know returning to that same place where you had that great, fun success and you led to the kiss and you're back here and it's just not the same. Things aren't. Th- you guys are just not clicking right now. He is not worth thinking about. And it's it's very sad. Just another terrible thing that happens to Jimmy in this episode before he cracks in the end with the insurance. Uh, Adjuster. And there's a moment right there where Jimmy almost touches Kim on the shoulder yeah. and pulls his hand back. It's it's just uh, it's 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 really nice. And I love that as a show we can hold on a shot like this, just yes. be silent and see people thinking. And that's one of the great influences of of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest to me is that that one of those last shots with Jack Nicholson where he's just on his face and. You just see all the different things going through his mind. Mm-hmm. That, that had a great influence on me as a... You know, I gr- love that you do that on this growing show. Up. And that you trust the audience that they, they follow. Such a great scene. Yeah, thank you, audience, for following, because it's not something we can take for granted. Yeah, for sure. The audience <laughs> is one of the reasons that we get to do this show. Yeah, it's... it's it's amazing. I'm just happy there are enough people watching that we yeah. can keep keep doing doing and what we're doing. they trust you guys, yeah, to to take yeah. the story somewhere and have everything resonate. And they even trust when they are confused to yeah, say, "Yeah, like it'll be all um, right. It's okay. Just stay in the car. Yeah, keep driving." <laughs> Good. Good. Well, we have. Uh, hopefully, we've got some thoughts about where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> So we're back at our factory location, and yes. this is another one of those nights where we had a full moon, and it was just the moon is too bright to shoot. <laughs> it's crazy. That that's Sorry, guys, a problem. we have to go home. The moon's really? too bright. <laughs> so what did you do? No, it's not not too bright to shoot. I shouldn't say that, but it's just it just sort of affects the lighting in a way that it, it's the, the the camera is so sensitive that it just picks all that stuff up. Any kind of light contamination, which is not an issue we're used to thinking about, but uh, shooting outside at night with this 
very high. So even if there's a light from a, a factory, like a couple of blocks away, it can brighten an area you want to keep dark. Mm. And so it keeps Aubrey and, 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 and all the rest of the team uh, rushing out with these big blacks and these big, you know, these, these, these big pieces of cloth blocking things off. I've got no choice. So yeah, when we were going to cut to a wide shot in a moment, you'll see the moon up in the sky that's really there. We actually waited for it to rise a little bit more to get it into the <laughs> into the frame. Oh really? We went in and we had lined up the wide shot, and it, uh, the moon wasn't quite right yet. So we went in and did that close up of Mark Brooks that you see uh, to give the moon a little more time to get up to the, <laughs> to the sky where you see it right there. You didn't explain Mark. You tip Mark that that's why the shot was right. No, You're, this it was a shot I was going to get anyway, <laughs> but it was a simpler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had lit for that shot, and then I had to go to Marshall. I was like, "Can we wait for the moon to rise a little more?" And he was like, "What?" Uh, and he was game for it. And said, "Let's. What other shot can we get?" And the, the, the tight on price was uh, was something we could do. Isn't Michael Mando terrific this season? Mm -hmm. He's, He's so, so good. Just, he, he's he's such uh, an intense actor. He's but, so great this season. Yep. And, and he's also he's tough, but he's so vulnerable. Yeah. He's like an open wound. to worry about here. He just wants to impress these old guys. <sighs> and switch those pills, then switch them back. Switched them back. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, I was always, I was really hoping that people followed this dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Because they really have to, they better understand this, understand this, otherwise the rest of the season is not going to make much sense. <laughs> uh, but I love that our characters are smart and Mike figures out the whole plan. As soon as he hears that uh, the pills are nitroglycerin type pills, that right. he knows everything. <laughs> That's right that he goes, okay, now I know what this guy's up to. And the notepad too. That's uh, you got to. The notepad is important in the next episode. That's right. And now here we get to this. Uh, uh, this scene. The coup de gras of this episode. Thank you for the scene. <laughs> oh, it was so much fun to do. Oh my god. I mean, what a what a great thing to get to do this scene. Any actor would kill for it. But they gave it to a non-actor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Bob. I don't know if you can claim to be a non-actor. I think that's well, over I don't think now. So. Uh, Jean, Jean Villapeak, is, is that? I, I feel like I'm not pronouncing anybody's names correctly. She was great. She's fantastic. Yeah, she's Second City. Is, is that she? right? Yes, I saw her at Second City. You guys, you just know everybody. This is a little scary, actually. <laughs> it's true. I'm Jimmy. James. This is right near our studios too. Right next door. Right oh, next is it? door. Right out back there. If you if the camera was higher and looking down, you'd see the road where uh, the cousins met the gun salesman back in uh, season mm. three of Breaking Bad. Uh, the great scene that Michelle McLaren directed out there. And you'd probably also see somewhere pretty nearby uh, the oil field from yes. episode episode nine. Yeah, just, just to the right. That's that's right. We, have, uh, we wow, make good tour, use. The tour for our show space. is going to be very short. Actually, you're just going to be going around in a circle, <laughs> around True. the stage, literally, because to the left is where Mike shoots down the shoes. Uh, right. But I love they showed me this location. You go in and there's these great windows looking out the mountains. It's like a perfect, just a perfect set to shoot in. Okay, I have to ask you, Bob. Yeah. In this scene. Yes. When do you think it occurs to Jimmy to throw uh, his brother under the bus? Uh, I'll tell you the truth. I think when he says his brother, and when he says his brother, they won't. He's just saying, he's literally listing the things in his life that are crumbling. Mm -hmm. And he just, my brother, and the second he says it, he's like, it comes, it, the whole plan comes into his head. But until he says his, my brother, he's actually feeling persecuted, breaking down, has nothing to lose. He's going to, he's fucked here. And... And he's just worn down, probably, for working in the fields and all that shit. And and so until he says it, that's what I ended on. Yeah. And I thought of every 
you know, variation. And we talked about every variation. I'm not sure that's how people see it, but that's how I felt I hope, about it. Well, I mean, how people see it is up to them, but I, I completely agree with, with Bob, and that's, uh, you know. I just thought, oh, oh yeah. my God. Poor Sad. bastard. Maybe, maybe he also <laughs> thinks if I show some emotion here, it might help me. I mean, it is a tactic. It doesn't mean he doesn't feel horrible. It just means maybe this is a good moment to just let myself go. And and then when he says, like, so all this is real. Because <laughs> yeah. he is. He's having a bad time. Because after you know being so hard on Kim and saying, fuck Chuck, put him behind us. Mm -hmm. It's in the past. You know, he, that he can't keep up that hard, hard yeah. shell. I'm getting run out on this community service. Yeah, I always felt that this was genuine for, for Jimmy. That was our attention, I think, yeah. what, when, we, when we broke it. But I know that I've talked to people who who felt differently, but it's how right I see there. it. Right there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's when the waterworks get bigger. Yeah. The crying is harder. Mm -hmm. There's something comes into his head that, like, oh yeah, yeah. just the way yeah, you glance yeah. at her, just so you, you're looking. Is she is she paying attention right. to me? Is she buying this? And then it goes to comedy <laughs> world <laughs> because I say into the trash <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely my favorite line. Yes, <laughs> that's me too. In an episode full of favorite lines. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> not? He's and she plays it so good too, and she's mm -hmm. just. When she sneaks to write it. <laughs> yes, it's grabbing the post-it notes. I just never that get, I never, he has, never get tired of seeing this scene. Jimmy has little dinosaur arms, but it's like, oh, mm. don't, don't do that. Don't. Like, <laughs> he's almost reaching across to grab the pad, but no, my arms can't quite reach. So let me you ask. You guys remember one of my funniest, the, one of the funniest scenes in a movie? In court? It's in the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Have you guys ever seen the Bill Murray movie where he's robbing the bank? Oh, yeah. And remember when he comes out? And he comes out dressed as a the hostage? Yeah. No. Oh. And he's got the red hair. He's like, he's a man. That's right. That's right. That's right. He's crazy. You got to stop him. <laughs> it's such funny fake that's crying. Right. How much rehearsal did you Quick guys change. do? Quick change. Uh, uh, we didn't do a lot of rehearsal. I mean, honestly, a, a scene like this, Peter, I'd rather just go for it because you got to fucking, you don't want to, this is the hardest thing to do. Over and over. Over and over. I mean, if we probably talk, we do talk about this kind of thing where I would say like probably, can you just do my close up first? Right. Can mm -hmm. I just go for it five or six times? And then when you have it, then, then why, then I'm just doing it from behind and stuff and. That's but it, so since good. you got to go Bobby for it. it. It was so great. Cool. So good. <laughs> well, as I've said before, I couldn't do it if you didn't write it for me. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, we yeah. get these compliments. So it's yeah. like, wow. yeah, well, that's what they wrote. Yeah. That's why I did that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> it's I all improv, this show. told to do it. <laughs> this, uh, this episode's a particular highlight for it's me. It's so great, Tom. Of, of the work that we've done so far. Oh, what a great season. Keep going. Enjoy. 